What's going on guys, my name's Zach, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at some high sec combat sites, or the Garista's Vigil in particular, but um, I just fancy doing some exploration randomly, which I never normally do, especially the combat sites, I've got like pretty much zero experience running them. But um, rather than fitting a Cerberus or a Gila up, which seems to be the current preferred ships to do it, I thought, well, I'll just repurpose one of me Vagabonds, which I had lying around, because I've got tons of them, like all PvP fit. And uh, the, the fit wasn't really too much different to the PvP fit, so um, yeah, let's uh, take a look and see how everything worked out. And there we go guys, there's the fit. It's pretty similar at a glance to the PvP cap regen fits that are going around with the large cap battery and the X-type large shield booster, but we'll just crack on from the top. So we've got the 220 Vulcan Auto Cannon T2s in there, really good, um, especially with the two Triton Enhancers, you get a really good range, like 25-30k, and I was actually hitting people at like 35 in the fall off like top ends only 26 so you can keep an eye on that for the vid very good at tracking as well and you can fit the 425s if you put an ancillary rig on but i thought well we're going to be fighting like mostly small stuff like cruisers and frigates and stuff so a little bit extra tracking from the 220s sort of the mid-range auto cannons in the game very good for the medium class and the vagabond doesn't get any bonuses for scanning obviously it's a combat heavy assault cruiser and I thought every bit of probe strength we can get just to speed up the scanning process was worth it. So I went with a sister's core probe launcher, which is pretty like standard now, I think, to be honest, like 50 mil or whatever. Not too bad. Um, we did stick with the Pithex type large shield booster, which is only like 100 mil in jitter, like very cheap for what it does. And it's really worth it on the Vagabond, especially because we get that shield boost bonus. Uh, the Gisty, Gistam B type 10mm afterburner, just because I had a line around, obviously you can just use a T2 and that's perfectly fine. And then we've got the Republic Fleet Large Cap Battery, which keeps us stable with everything running at 34.5%, which is really good. You can skimp a little bit on this and use the Thugger version, which is a little bit cheaper and actually takes less fitting room on the power grid as well. So that's always a good choice, especially for the PvP fits to keep the cost down. Uh, this one... The Relic Analyzer 2, um, rather than putting like a data and a Relic on there as well, I just went for the Relics because you tend to make more money off them to start with. But I did originally want to try one of the new faction ones, which is the Zegma Integrated Analyzer. And this does both variations, so you can you can scan datas and Relics with this one. So I thought that would be pretty cool. But looking at the prices, like in Jitter, 377 mils, the cheapest one, which is pretty crazy. Although I would I would have paid that just to stick it on the ship and uh, have a go of it and eventually I would have sold that module anyway so in between like costs I probably would have just lost a few mil which isn't really too bad but it would have been really cool to put one of them on but the I haven't got hacking level 5 so I just had to go with uh, the T2 which sucks. Um, the gyro st stabilizer times 3 for the nice damage. And the Triton Enhancer, which gives us a pretty good uh, fall off and tracking bonus. So we'll get 26 kilometers at the top end, but I found when I was actually running the site against the cruisers especially, I was able to like hit them, not hard, but hit them pretty well at 35 kilometers, which was uh, pretty, pretty insane really. And the rigs, I wasn't really sure what to do with the rigs because I was thinking, should we put some scanning stuff on there? Like, um to make the probes better or the, the hacking easier and I thought well the, the high sec and low sec hacking's pretty easy anyway not really too much difficulty going on there so I just went for a tank so if we're going around um, angel space and stuff we've got the explosive and we've got the kinetic as well for the garistas which is without them on is our two lost resistances so it wasn't too bad um, usually um, I go with other types of rigs for the cap and stuff on the PvP fits, but we'll just stick with these for now. And it worked out pretty well against the Garistas at least, although I can't see any tank issues for any of the high sex sites with this ship, to be honest. Even though I'm not like a super expert on stuff like this. But yeah, it worked out pretty well. Uh, in the cargo hold, we just had the obvious assortment of ammo. Uh, stuck with phased for the Garistas, obviously. Um, some nanite repair paste just in case and a couple of drifter drugs. So we've got the Locora, Locori, or whatever the fuck it's called, for the track end just in case we needed it. Some pesky little frig had we scrammed or whatever and we couldn't hit it. And we had the Thurio for the shield boost just in case as well. And also when I do exploration I take an extra 8 probes because of this reason. So as soon as we shoot them out, it'll automatically reload to save just an extra few clicks. So I think that's a good little tip for any explorer there. So yeah, that's all good. 
pretty easy site. I did a Garista's Vigil, which is probably like by the looks of it, a, the super easy site anyway. And we got the Escalation and we got an absolutely absurd drop for the, the final thing, which is pretty cool. So you'll see that coming towards the end of the vid. So I'll uh, kick off the footage with the scanning and I'll talk, the, talk us through it. With the Vagabond being a heavy assault cruiser, it comes with zero bonuses towards scanning. But it doesn't really matter, especially in high sec. All it means is that it's a couple extra scans, if that, and then it's business as usual. Explorers have commented that one of the gates require a passkey. Alternatively, it can be bypassed by convincing the commander to unlock it. But before we do that, we need to take out the frigs and desis with the drones, and then use the guns on the rest. Shortly after killing the initial wave of NPCs, the Port Authority officer spawns in a battleship. Super easy. I burn close to him and then reduce speed to zero, giving perfect tracking so I can lay down all that DPS on him. To access the second room in the combat site, you don't need to pick anything up from the officer. You just need to kill him and then the gate opens up. Warping into the second room, straight away I see two stasis weather fire towers. Usually bad news, but in this case not too much, more of a nuisance. Guns on the towers, drones on the frigs and desis as usual. And if you notice that second tower taking big amounts of damage, even 10 kilometers beyond the maximum fall off of the guns. At this stage in the site I was a bit disappointed I hadn't seen any Dread Garista NPC pirates yet, so I decided just to head on this rock instead. After that I swing around, kill this last NPC and hit the last room. Turns out there was no Dread Garista rat to kill, but instead we did get an escalation. And in the expedition to stab it's telling us it's only 7 jumps. Let's get over there. Finally a Dread Garista rat spawns, so all that's left to do now is primary him, kill him, get the loot and then get out. No need to kill the rest of the stuff. As I'm open out I'm checking the loot and I really can't believe it, 330 mils worth of mid-grade crystal omega, that's totally insane for a high sec drop, I think that uh, must be pretty rare I'm guessing, like for that much risk. So it was straight to Jitter to sell it up and um, yeah, that was a good end to the vid, I'm really glad I actually decided to record it, it was uh, just a totally random thing, I was, I was watching some guy streaming who was doing the exploration in a gala and I thought fuck it we'll just build a vagabond just to try it. And I'm glad I did, because it turned out really well. Yeah, I had lots of fun making this vid, guys. If you want to see more like this, let us know in the comments. And you can see more right now.